This portion of New Day Northwest is sponsored by the Boeing Classic at TPC Snoqualmie Ridge. It's a new day all over. One of the most spectacular events of the summer around here is the Boeing Classic Golf Tournament. As part of the PGA Champions Tournament, this world-class event is not only fun to watch, but also raises money for important research being done here on autoimmune diseases. This is the 10th year for the Boeing Classic. And Dr. Daniel Campbell from Benaroya Research Institute at Virginia Mason is here to tell us about how far they've come in the last decade. We also welcome Lauren Lippincott, a health therapist who lives with five autoimmune diseases. Thank you both for being here. You feeling okay today? I'm feeling pretty good. Doing Thank pretty you. well? All right. Well, doctor, let's talk about, first of all, what are autoimmune diseases in case people are not familiar? Sure, Margaret. There are actually over 80 recognized autoimmune diseases. And on really? the surface, yeah. And, and these uh, impact one in 20 Americans. And on the surface, these diseases don't seem to have very much in common when you look at them. They're common diseases that people know about, type 1 diabetes, mm -hmm. multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis. So on the surface, they don't seem to have very much in common, but underlying them, they all are diseases in which the immune system, which is supposed to protect us from infection, actually turns against healthy tissues and starts to destroy healthy tissues. Such a scary idea, your body just turning on itself. It is, and so the, the different diseases really manifest from the fact that it can target different organs. So if you have your immune system targeting your pancreas, you lose the ability to control blood sugar and you become diabetic. If your immune system is targeting the cartilage in your joints, then you develop a painful swelling in the joints and mm -hmm. inflammation that's mm -hmm. rheumatoid arthritis. In the central nervous system, in the brain and spinal cord, you end up with the uh, loss of coordination and, and the yeah. symptoms of multiple sclerosis. So on the surface, very different. Underlying cause it, is very, very similar. similar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Does this affect women more than men? It does. There's a real, uh, a much stronger prevalence among women. There's Do we about have a any two idea to why? Two um, to one. Yeah. Um, any idea why? There are a lot of theories we're and hypotheses for <laughs> yeah, why. We're just lucky, yeah. exactly. <laughs> like there so are a lot many of other hypotheses things. for why, uh, but but I think that the, the underlying causes of autoimmunity really aren't as well understood as uh, as as we'd like them to be. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Okay. So. Um, now, Lauren has five yes. different mm -hmm. autoimmune diseases. Does having one make you more likely to have another? Yeah, it's very common uh, in individuals who have one autoimmune disease to end up developing other autoimmune diseases. And again, this speaks to the underlying commonality in right. these diseases, that once your immune system has, in a way, malfunctioned and started to recognize healthy tissues as, as, and organs as something that are under attack, Ugh. that can spread to other... Uh, uh, organs and, and, and manifest itself in other ways. And we found that from a, a genetic standpoint, a lot of the genes linked to one autoimmune disease are also linked to other autoimmune diseases. So there's so, a real commonality there. Lauren, when were you first diagnosed? I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when I was four. And, um, so you've been dealing with this for your whole life? Whole life, yes, definitely. And then when did the others sort of pile on? You know, just slowly throughout the course of my life. Uh, when I was in middle school, I was diagnosed with uh, Raynaud's phenomenon, mm -hmm. which is basically cold mm -hmm. hands mm -hmm. and cold feet, poor circulation. In middle school, or in high school, I was diagnosed with alopecia, so my hair fell out, which is a great time in your life oh, to have. Yeah some hair missing. And in college, I was diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis, which is arthritic type symptoms, and later on celiac disease. Are you going for a record? I'd, I'd like to draw the line. I Absolutely. think I'm done. Yeah. So, I mean, the really good thing about BRI is that they're making these advances. Mm -hmm. How have these therapies, uh, especially the things that have accelerated in their success rates yeah. over the past few years, affected your life? I mean, it's been amazing from the time I was a kid, age four, till now. The technology is available. Um, the therapies that are available really have changed my life. Uh, and really allow me to live a full, healthy, um, relatively normal, happy life. That is amazing. I'm truly indebted to them. And that it's is amazing. Amazing to have it here in my city. And I, well, I feel that way too. Yeah. I mean, BRI and so many other organizations that are here are, are making some incredible advances. But you guys are really on the on the fast track. Um, what would you say are some of the biggest breakthroughs over the last decade? Well, I, I think in the last ten years, we've we've made a tremendous amount of progress. I'll just cite a couple of examples. Um, Certainly there's a lot of, of uh, a long ways to go. But for example, in type 1 diabetes, a disease that Lauren has, um, there's really no what we would call a disease modifying therapy. In other words, you get type 1 diabetes, the and pancreas is destroyed, yeah. you've got it, you take insulin for the rest of your life to replace and, and control your blood sugar. Um, 
We've run over a dozen clinical trials over the last 10 years at the Ben Roy Research Institute looking at ways to try to halt or stop that um, immune attack on the mm -hmm. pancreas. And we've, we've had a lot of success in some of those trials. And, and there's a long ways to go. Some patients don't respond. And in a lot of patients, uh, the response doesn't last for as long as we'd like it to, to last. But we've been able to come up with ways to to try to at least slow down that attack right. on the pancreas. Which and it gives us hope exciting. that we're going to be able exactly. to give us a foothold, right? It, it that does. we're going to be able to, to continue to progress against these and diseases. And I'm guessing that hope is an important part of this because a lot of these diseases are things we can't see when we look at you, Very but you so. know them. You've got the psychological difficulty of dealing with all of that yes. and think this will never end. And so mm -hmm. having these developments really does sort of open a window of hope. Yes, and not just the ones that I can take medically, but also just knowing that these people are dedicating their, their intellect and their careers to trying to better my life is an emotional way of supporting me too. Yes. It really does lift me up. I'm glad to see you doing so well, thank Doctor. You. Thank you for the work you guys do. Thank you, and Margaret. you know, may it just continue and be so successful that we don't have to deal with many of these conditions ever again. This year's Boeing Classic runs from August 18th through the 24th at TPC Snoqualmie Ridge. The passes are available for one day or for the entire week, and you can find details on our website. We'll be back after this.